the circumcision. We worship God in spirit. Not in the flesh. Aim to be bringing sounds from heaven. And yet we are bringing those sounds in the gyration of demonic spirits. of your word has always given light it has always given understanding to the simple we thank you for this evening you will bless us so much and we will not remain the same again and it will be that you will make for yourself a great name and none among us will remain the same again in Jesus mighty name we pray if you came to church, can you give the Lord a clap of it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Can we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12? We just read verse 1 to 3 and uh, we will begin to talk. Before that, I want to appreciate God for another opportunity to be here to speak. I always and we always do this, celebrating my father in the Lord and my mother in the Lord for, I thought you would clap to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. My father and my mother, they trust the love and the privilege to always stand to share God's counsels. I do not take it for granted and uh, I do my best to maintain the integrity of my, of my loyalty and submission to this family because I know that the fulfillment of my ministry, my calling is tied to my submission to, the, to these couples and I'm not saying this just to play with words. I know this by revelation. That's the reason whenever I'm called upon to come to share God's word, every other engagement is canceled. Just to be here. Praise Master Jesus. We will be doing a Bible study. Papa told me that he has been teaching on spiritual maturity and I would like to, to delve into that, but you know, say I work out so this thing, you know, the so, I will delve into that, but from another angle, what I will be doing tonight is called, I, I just call it a refresher's course. Hallelujah. I will be teaching on what I titled spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Spiritual growth. And the things I will be sharing with you, can you help this mind, may not be deep as you expect them to be deep, but they are actually deep. All right? They are actually deep, but to you, uh, some of you that are professors in theology, some of you, <laughs> and some of you that have gained stature in the pathways of spiritual progress, you may, you may know which to write. But I advise you to write. I will be teaching systematically, progressively, setting forth the basics for spiritual growth. Because 
it is pivotal to your usefulness in the kingdom of God. Spiritual growth is pivotal to your what? To your usefulness in the kingdom of God. Can you preach that to somebody seated close to you? Say spiritual growth. Spiritual. Hey, I thought you would talk. Say spiritual growth. Is pivotal to your usefulness in the kingdom of God. Can you preach that again? It says spiritual growth is pivotal to your usefulness in the kingdom of God. For the very last time, can you preach it? it says spiritual growth is pivotal to your usefulness. In the kingdom of God. Even though this is not my test for this sermon, it has a serious alignment. So let's read this scripture. First Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read from verse 1 to 3. I read, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. And now this is the body, the passion of every pastor. I posted something on my Facebook wall this afternoon. I haven't preached in one denomination. Because I, I, by the grace of God, God has privileged us to preach in different pupits, in different places, every month, every week, every day. And one of the errors I have seen in modern Christianity, in Christianity in Nigeria, is that many people that are that does not have, is it that they don't have the ability or cannot expound the scriptures are functioning as pastors. And it is an abomination for someone that cannot teach the scriptures to be a pastor. It's a serious abomination. Every pastor should be a teacher. And if you are not in a teaching church, you are in a dangerous place. Are you here? Okay, you are not with me. Are you here? Uh, you, you don't like what I, I'm saying now. Because it is evident that many of you grew up in a wrestling atmosphere. Where you wrestle with demons. You fight with powers. Even though the warfare theology is actually a New Testament theology. If all you grew up with as a believer is die and kill. If had warfare prayers in New Testament theology, the focus is not on mortars. The focus is on spiritual entities. If you understand warfare, you discover that behind any physical activity, there is a spiritual force that is behind it. And that's the reason when you kill one witch in your family, that spirit may likely leave and maybe your elder sister will possess that, <coughs> that spirit if your elder sister has not been fortified by the presence of the Holy Spirit and by the written word of God. Hallelujah. So if you grow up in a place whereby God's word is not systematically and uh, explicitly taught, uh, you will be like shorty. You know those days in a coup, somebody confessed which. There's one of my brother, he's a family relation. The guy, he's older than you, but I told Pastor, he and his brother, they are like this. And the guy, the lady confessed that in the coven, he, he took stone, grind the stone and put it on their head. <laughs> That's the reason they are not growing. And if you are in a church that does not teach, grind the stone is on your head. <laughs> you can't grow. Are you with me? So if you are in a church that does not teach the whole counsels of God, you are in a dangerous place. Can you preach that to somebody close to you? Say, if you are in a church that does not teach the whole counsels of God, you are in a dangerous place. Say, Ronu. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, you see, because the teaching ministry is pivota, pivota, to the balance of ecclesiastical activities. So Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant. That's why I teach. That is why I write. That is why I pray. You know, if you go to Galatians, he said, my little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. So the apostolic labor actually is beyond the pupit. It's in the place of prayer. 
But you see, only prayer does not grow a Christian. It takes 50% fervent praying and 50% fervent study to be a spiritually mature believer. The neglect of one is not good for you. If you are a man of the world, but you don't know the way of the altar, you will be guilty of pride. You will be guilty of arrogance. But if you are a man of prayer and you don't know the word, you will be guilty of zeal without knowledge. Huh? And you may, because as we begin to study, you will discover that in order to manifest the gift of the spirit, you need to have a strong alignment with the written word of God and the living word of God. Hope you know there are two different things. The logos and the rema, the living word and the written word. Hope you know. And the job of the person of the Holy Spirit is to minister the realities of the living word of God to you as you study the written word of God. I told you it's not deep. So, <coughs> you just stay with it. <coughs> I told you it's not deep. It's because the, the Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he shall bring you into all truth. And the Greek word that is used is aleteha. It means all that is contained in something. The reality that is hidden. And that is from where we have the Greek word musterion. It means mystery that is unveiled. And we have the word apocalypse. It means to open so that it can be behold. It can be seen. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he reveals to you the mystery of Jesus. And on the strength of that revelation, you are able to gain ascendancy in the civilization of God. And you become a useful entity as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. Are you with me? Oh. Oh. You know what we teach? We teach with a body, and when we teach, we do impartation. Teaching is impartation. The Lord, the Lord visited me. Hmm. I saw the light that John saw. It is called the light of the glorious Christ. I was on the mountaintop a few weeks ago. I was on the mountaintop. I traveled to Ikiti State and I was desperate because I knew that this season of my life is winding away. And a new season is upon me as a preacher. And I need that to see something beyond theology. We are, I have had many encounters, many, but I needed something fresh. So I navigated to the, one of the Babalola Mountains in, the, in, the, in, in Idoile at Ikiti State. And I was in the dark. Standing on top of the rock. And I saw the glory of Jesus. Bright light that words cannot describe. Bright light. Bright. The light is bright. Oh, the word bright is not enough to describe the word. The, the light that I saw. It was that light that the apostles saw on the mountain of transfiguration. I saw the light, the beauty of Jesus. And he said to me, I'm alive. I'm alive. That is when I knew that my teaching ministry has migrated to impartation. We have been doing impartation, but we know that when we speak, eh, we do impartation. It is not just laying of hands now. When I speak, the words are spirit and they are life. So we constantly teach to bring impartation. And that's the reason you see that we teach to a point and the atmosphere is charged because what is coming forth is beyond theology, is beyond nice English. It is the word of life. So I saw the glory. And I knew that I have come to a season. Whereby the words. We, we form in the heart of the people. A certain kind of lifestyle. We will not labor in vain. In the name of Jesus. So the, the pastor should be a teacher. So Paul has a body. I don't want you to be ignorant. And the reason Paul was teaching is in verse 2. Let's go to verse 2. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. However you were led. Now, why did he make this statement? He said, I'm teaching you to bring you to the current revelation of your current state. 
Because while you were in the world, there are technologies through which it's used to operate spiritual things. But now that you have come to a new civilization, you need to be taught this way. You know you were Gentiles. You were carried away by dumb idols. And there are ways you do things in that civilization. Now you have come here, so I need to teach you. Are you where? Are you, are you here? You were Gentiles. You were carried away. Now you have come into life. Now we need to teach you the protocols and technologies of life. Because you were operating in, by the protocols and technologies of darkness. And something is at stake here. If I do not teach you, you may end up trying to activate the things of Christ with the technologies of darkness. Kai, <coughs> are you here? I told you it's simple, all right? So stay with me. So when, you, when an Eze mom gave his life to Christ, gives his life to Christ, the best thing is not to put him in a protocol department or in traffic so that he can be controlling cars. Put him in the front to learn. You know, it's a problem now. In many good churches, big churches, when an Igbo smoker just gives, gives his life to Christ, they want to engage him by making, putting him in the traffic to be controlling cars. Instead of them to put him in a foundation school, during church service, he should sit down and learn because you were Gentiles carried away. And that guy will control vehicle for some time. When they notice his consistency, they will ordain him a pastor. And he will start prophesying and doing things by the technologies of darkness because he was not taught the ways of Christ. Are you with me? Uh, somebody has been following me on, what, on Facebook. And lo and below and behold, I don't know how he got my WhatsApp number. He chatted me up. He said, sir, I've been following you. I want to follow Jesus. I said, Kai, you want to follow Jesus? I said, okay, okay. He said, where is your church? I said, I don't go to church in the morning, it's evening. He said, okay, I want to come. So she came and we started doing Bible study. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say Bible study. Bible. Now, she used to attend one big church. And she discovered that the way we follow Jesus here is not what she, they, she was taught. And she can't cope. The way we follow Jesus seems to be difficult. I, I say, they don't tell me before, but <coughs> we are not teaching that this is how to follow Jesus. And it's simple. what we do actually is simple Bible study. That's what we do. We just open the scriptures. We expand the scriptures. We open it so that we can see that these are the very things that Jesus taught. We have been called to preach the gospel of the kingdom. So we open the scriptures. I said, Kai, not be so they tell me, not be so they tell me. Not be so. I, we, I didn't see her again. <coughs> we have been looking for her now. Do you know why? She had been in church all her life, but she was not made to know the ways of Christ. That, don't surprise that many of you that comes to the tent see find it difficult to understand the things that have been coming out of the pupils. You have been in a cave since called church. But you were not made to know the ways of Christ. You were Gentiles carried away by dumb idols. However, you were led. Let's go to verse 3. So we'll go to first Peter's. Therefore, I make you, therefore, I make known to you that no man, no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cost. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is. A serious matter. If we are going to consider this, we need an hour to dissect each and every one of them because the Bible says now that no man speaking by the Spirit accost Jesus. Call it Jesus accused. In other words, your salvation is a product of the workings of the Spirit. And your consistency in Christ is a product of the workings of the Spirit also. You don't become a Christian until the Holy Spirit quickens you. And you don't continue to be a Christian until you receive the quickenings of the Spirit. So no man call it Jesus a cause, except no man call it Jesus a cause. And no one can say, I mean, that Jesus is Lord, except by the Spirit. It is the Holy Ghost that does the work. So our job is to bring you into maturity. Through teaching, so that you can understand the workings of the Spirit. Because one of the signs that you are growing well is that you are increasing in the knowledge of the Christ. Don't forget this. Write this down. One of the signs that your growth is effective, that your growth is strong, is accurate, is that you are advancing, increasing 
in the knowledge of the Christ. That's one of the signs that you are growing. Is that you are increasing in the knowledge of Jesus. I don't care to know whether you can speak in tongues for four hours, ten hours, hundred hours. But if you are not increasing in the knowledge of Jesus, you are not actually growing. That, that's hard. But you are not actually growing. If you are not increasing in the knowledge of Jesus, you are not growing. And it means you are not really praying well. Because true prayers bring you into the layer of that revelation called Jesus. Because if you are praying by the Spirit, you should know Jesus more. And it should affect your lifestyle. I, imagine, I can't imagine that kind of tongues you, you speak that has not affected your character. That thing you do. You speak in tongues, but you lie in English. <coughs> oh, Maki Talima. I'm trying to understand that dimension of tongues. Because if the Holy Ghost I have is the one you have, by now you should be a better person. Because the Holy Spirit does not have versions. We have one Holy Ghost. One Jesus. If the one I have that is helping me is the one you have, by now you should hate sin with all your heart. That you call, I, I, di I did it, I don't know her. It's, you are lying. You know her. I, I, actually, you, you, are, you are lying. You know how. Even before you lied, you know that you want to lie. Has it happened to you? That when the call is coming, you know you were going to lie. And you lied, actually. MD, am I offending you now? <coughs> eh? Okay. So the last time, okay, you lied. You know you were going to lie. But you lied, actually. <laughs> Praise Master Jesus. So we have to teach. So spiritual growth. Now write this down, number one. I mean, I've made this statement before, but I told you it's a refresher's course. Number one, spiritual growth is a must to the Christian who really wants to become much in the hands of God, comma, is a spiritual growth is a must to the Christian who really wants to become much in the hands of God, comma, and to the man who desires to fulfill his eternal ordination. I'm going to come again so that you can write down. Spiritual growth is a must. To the man who really wants to become much in the hands of God, comma, hands of God, comma, and to the man who really wants to fulfill his eternal ordination. I come again for the very last time. Spiritual growth is a must to the man who really wants to become much in the hands of God and to the man who desires to fulfill his what? Eternal Ordination. So you must understand that first God wants you to be much in his hand. That is, he wants you to be a, a vessel in his hand. And number two, God wants you to fulfill your eternal destiny. When we say eternal destiny, we are talking about that which has been crystallized in the theater of eternity before you were born. You must understand the theology of predestination from the Greek word prorizo. It means that before you were born, something had been written concerning you. Are you here? Am I too fast? Am I too fast? Somebody said yes here. Who was that person? Nobody. Now my ear deceived me. Am I too fast? Oh. Okay. Why you can't hide before? Far I can't from here is there. You're not supposed to come attention. So there's something called eternal destiny. Before you were born, Jeremiah 1 5, that before I formed you, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. So something I've been written actually concerning your life. And the possibility of the fulfillment of that ordination is tied to your growth. So you see how important growth is. And you see, you must understand that all of us will not be pastors. Because when we talk about spiritual growth, you are just thinking about ministry. But actually, all of us are called into ministry. But all of us will not be pastors. All of us will not be prophets. All of us will not be apostles. All of us will not be teachers and all of us will not be evangelists. But all of us will do great things for God. Should I say that again? Let me say it. All of us will not be fivefold ministers. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. 
But all of us will do great things for God. On the, and the possibility of doing great things for God is spiritual growth. And you see, spiritual growth is not praying like this. That's not actually spiritual growth. Most of you that do like this, I like, I like zeal. When I see zealous people, I like them. But you see, you have been doing like that for 10 years. If we decide to conduct a questionnaire, we will cry for you. We will cry. Because nothing is for me. You see, prayers actually was designed by God that as you constantly engage in it, it forms something on the inside. And after some time, it will be evidence of that something has been forming. You, you suddenly, suddenly see yourself living in a certain way. Talking in a certain way. You suddenly see yourself becoming so useful to the church. Becoming so useful to the kingdom of God. And it's a sign that all, what you have been doing is for me. Because no prayer is actually wasted. Any prayer prayed in faith. Prayed by the spirit. Prayed in the name of Jesus. Counts in the realm of the spirit. Unless your prayer is a Pharisaic prayer. Are you with me? If I'm blessing you now, wave your hands and say Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. Unless your prayer is a Pharisaic prayer. And that growth is what really guarantees you that you will fulfill destiny. That's what guarantees. And you must know how important this thing is. It was last year, I was telling them somewhere on Friday night, that it was last year I knew why God conditioned my life. I knew that if I had not listened to God concerning the posture to take as a young man, I would be lost forever. Because God told me, and whenever I share this with my father and the Lord, I, I tell him that I, I, don't, I don't want it to sound like I'm creating an illusion for myself. I don't like to be fake. Me, I hate being fake. I hate being stupid. And God came to me many years ago. He said, I don't want you to go to university. It was hard. I've shared this many times here. It was hard. It was hard. So I went to seminary four years, and now we are trying to pursue a higher degree in seminary and other things. But why university? If you want me to do all my degrees, from the first degree to being a, a PhD holder, if you want me to have everyone here, why? I want to have a name as I. As I began to grow, 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 grow. And he came to me one day. He said, do you know if I have allowed you, you would have wasted your life. And I knew that because I have been growing in God. Me, I know I'm growing. I know actually that I'm growing. And it's not pride actually, I'm sorry. But I know that I'm growing. And it's because I'm growing, I knew when he told me last year that this is why I didn't give you the liberty to do what you liked. If you, are, if you know the Holy Ghost, you will discover that your life will be conditioned so that you can fulfill your eternal destiny. And that's why spiritual growth is a must for you. You must grow. We are not calling you to the tent every Sunday to delay you, to waste your time. We are not trying to while away time. Everything from the teachings to the worship section to the impartations is to advance you in the Lord. You must become something after some time. Hi, hi, oh my. After some time, we should look at you and behold a certain kind of creature. We look at you and see, okay, something is happening. I heard one of my sons teach on Friday. I went to a prayer meeting and I don't minister during the week. So he was sharing with us from Colossians chapter 4. Kai, Kai, Kai. He says, see this man who? See this man. He was, I knew that he was not trying to please me. He was sharing from his spirit, and we were writing. Actually, he was making sense. Not seven keys, though. I'm not, I'm not talking about seven keys, though. I'm talking about, you know, there are different kinds of Bible studies or sermons. We have topical sermons, we have textual sermons, we have typological sermons. And we have expository sermon. And this young man was doing expository teaching from Colossians. And I discovered that this guy has been growing. And that's the responsibility of the preacher. Is to, when a church whereby only pastor can actually do some things is a court. It's a court. 
It's a call that thing called mentorship. It's that thing called it's a cult. If after five years in church, only you can preach, only you can lay hands, only you can do mighty things in God, you are a devil. You are. Because our job is not to project ourselves. It's to bring Jesus into the stage so that as they behold him, they are changed. For we all, not some of us, with open faces, behold him as in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. Are changed. So if it's Jesus they have been seeing, there should be some element of growth and change. And it's a generation. You know, my wife was telling me yesterday evening, okay, it was not my wife, one, one, somebody that stayed in my house, that somebody, you know, this thing called prank they do. They did it to one woman. And the woman was wearing apron of one church. And when the prank, you know, the prank is they want to use her for ritual. And they got, oh, the God of this is my God. Oh, God of this church. Oh, God of this church. Then I discovered that as sincere as she is, she has not been growing. If the first thing we can remember is the name of our pastor, we are weak. You don't like what I just said? Is the first thing, if the first thing we can remember is the name of our geo, we are fake and weak. So spiritual growth is a must for you. If not, you, you will pay 50,000 naira to buy olive oil. You. One day, you must pay for your ignorance. <coughs> what can most people say? You must pay. You will buy pepper meat for... You know, <coughs> there's one, one thing I saw. The guy is called his olive, uh, olive water. Kai, one is 5,000. You know if we big rich this ever. That, those people are actually paying for not seeking Jesus. One day you will pay. One day you will what? You will pay. So it's a must number two. Write this down. A Christian that is not striving for spiritual growth. I come again. A Christian that is not striving for spiritual growth will become useless. Please, take note of these words. A Christian that is not striving for spiritual growth will become useless in the hands of God and at the same time become an experiment of demonic activities. I'm going to say it again. A Christian that is not striving for spiritual growth first will become useless in the hands of God and at the same time will become an experiment for demonic activities. And this is very important. Demons, they are wired in such a way they can easily notice someone that does not know Jesus. So you become useless in the hands of God at the same time. You become an experiment. You know, one experiment took place in Act of the Apostles chapter 19. The seven sons of Sceva, you know it. They were trying to show something. And the demon overpowered them and said, Jesus, I know. So demons are intelligent. Paul, I know. Demons are... When you are a man of stature in the spirit, they know. So that's why they could recognize that body that demons were cast out that was still fresh. Nothing has occupied it. They could notice that ah, nothing is here. So they, he came with seven other demons, more wicked than, and they were doing practicals actually inside of him. It was an experiment, and that's how dangerous it is to be a spiritual babe for long. And the truth is that there is a very, there is a degree to which the fate of your pastor can carry you. And the days that we are stepping in, it will be dangerous to be a weak Christian. The days that we are stepping in, it will be dangerous. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Now, the exploit there is not raising the dead. If you study, I'm a theologian actually. And we like use, you doing right interpretations. Even though extensively, there's what we call uh, applications of scriptures. And the authority, the basis for scriptural application is first interpreting that verse in the, right of its, in, in the light of its immediate context. If you have done that, then you have the right to apply. First application is this. They that know their God 
will be strong and resist him. That's the right application. Interpretation, actually. Because the contest is on the Antichrist. And it's a vogue in the civilization of the Jews. When he comes and began to do a lot of things, and begin actually to do a lot of things in the temple, he said, they that know their God will be the people that will have the right, the authority to resist him. So the context of that scripture, that Daniel chapter 12, 11 verse 32, it is resisting the wicked one. So when you see demons operating here, you say, you know that scripture Jesus says in Matthew 13, that no man can actually take anything out of a strong man's house until he binds him. And that's spiritual growth. He's not shouting Jesus hundred times. No, he's not. So you become an experiment to demons if you don't know Jesus after five years of being a Christian. After five years of being a believer, going to church every second Friday all night, every last Friday all night. And the last one you did is that is anointing for bright prize. That's the last one you did. Why are they laugh now? Why well, are many for this worry? <laughs> you saw that thing? Oh my God. Have you seen who tied this goat? You didn't see it? Hey, you, you, are, you, are not, you, you are not. Hey, you need to go to some programs. Who tied this goat? And people are running from pillar to post just to find deliverance. Because they actually are going through demonic manipulations. Demons are real. Demons are real. Before I, I, I got married, a few months to the time I got married, you know, I've been doing priesthood, priesthood over that territory. And it was actually, it was when I left that a church bought the company I was staying. Because all through the history of that street, there was no church. And we have been laboring that light will come. And it came to a point... I and some persons will be walking through the street and praying and because I knew I would soon leave and I don't want to leave that street in darkness. So we labored after some time. Before I relocated and got married, I discovered that demons in form, some, in form of monkey were coming to bite my hand. I would be sleeping now. Demons. You, you, did that thing you are doing, you, you, you come here and, and say, hey, old territory, lift up your heads. And you go home and eat pandediam and sleep. And you Facebook for us. You don't know how strong and wicked demons are. So we'll come and I will shout. The next day I will do. Then I discovered that a church bought the company. I said, okay. Then later I saw a good church and there is light now in the streets. And God is helping them. So if you don't grow spiritually, you will be useless in the hands of God and you will become an experiment. For demons. When they want to do, perform a new style, they will say, ah, Victor, oh, sorry, Victor. They'll say, they'll say, ah, Elizabeth is there. Oh. They will come. So growth is a must. First, to the Christian who wants to become much in the hands of God, and who wants to fulfill his eternal ordination, and secondly, it's a must. A man who is not striving for spiritual growth will become useless. God cannot do anything serious with your life. Even though your calling is genuine, if you are not growing, you won't fulfill the calling. Let me show you something. Colossians chapter 4 verse 17. Briefly before we go to the next thing. I, there is no time. I wanted to share a lot of things with you today. But my time is very short. And said to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that you fulfill it. Now take note of it. Take heed. Who is to take heed? Archippus. He has a responsibility. In other words, how much of the call of God upon his, his life he fulfills is determined by him. Just like how much of God you know does not depend on God. It depends on you. In the same veil, how much of the call of God you fulfill does not depend on God. It depends on you. So, this will lead me to the next point. Write this down. Spiritual growth is not an impartation. I said this year before and I want you to write it down. And when you get on brood on it, spiritual growth is not an impartation. Can you preach that to somebody? Say spiritual growth is not an impartation. Preach it again. Say spiritual growth is not an impartation. But as a result of perpetual 
spiritual labors. Yes, spiritual growth is not an impartation, but it's as a result of perpetual spiritual labors. I'm going to say it again. Spiritual growth is not an impartation. We don't do <sighs> grow. That's what some of you are looking for. Come on, close your eyes. Raise up your twins. Grow. Try, try four. Somebody did it back. Try, may... Grow. If you like, make it 400 times, make it get us back. It not go grow. It's not an impartation. Although we can activate, like one of the things God told me is that after this meeting, after I finish teaching, I will lay hands on a few persons. So much will be activated. But you see, it is possible for something genuine to happen to you. But sustaining it is your responsibility. Am I teaching well? Are you sure? So spiritual growth is not an impartation, but as a result of perpetual spiritual labors. So you study Bible today, you will study tomorrow. You pray today, you will pray. Because everything you need is at the other side of consistency. Everything you need in life is at the other side of consistency. Everything you need is at where? The other side of consistency. So you pray today, you pray tomorrow. You pray next tomorrow, you pray next month. You pray, you pray. After some time, you see yourself becoming a man in God. Number two. Spiritual growth is a responsibility upon each believer. First, no, I'm teaching subheading, subheading. So first, is not an impartation. Secondly, it's a responsibility upon every believer. All right? is a responsibility upon every believer. Each believer is responsible for his growth. So that's why the, that word came, salvation is personal. It's a some personal something. It's something that you have to do by yourself. You have to study by yourself. Pray by yourself. You must, to, you must learn to wake up when others are sleeping. You must learn to stay awake when others are what? Are sleeping. You must learn to stay hungry when others are eating. What is discipline? Is saying yes when you need to say yes and say no when you need to say no. That's my simple definition. That's discipline. Say no when you need to. Who told you that sleep won't come? The night is meant for sleep, so actually you will sleep. Sleep will come. But you see, you decide to stay awake. I know many times you off your alarm, you, many times. You off it and snooze it. 15 minutes, you off it again. That's how you find yourself in the morning and you are crying. Oh God, help me. Yeah, it actually helped you. But you love sleep more than life. You are like Esau. He's a profane man. Does not have value for spiritual things. If you sleep constantly, you don't consider your destiny, you are, you are a profane man. The first person to honor the call of God upon your life is you. You are the first person to honor God told me, he said, your attitude toward the call upon your life will determine my attitude toward you. That's what God told me. That's when, that, that song is not accurate. Though it's a nice song, biblical, but it's not accurate. That daddy went the pamper. Hey, hey. He does not pamper every day. Daddy went the pamper. Hey. There are times, he, when, when he told me that, I, I felt... That was one of the most wicked words I've heard from God. Your attitude toward the call upon your life will determine my attitude toward you. So, that, I'm knowing him as a king, not as daddy when the pamper. Are you with me? For whom a father loves, he just dies. We judge things by the scriptures. And as we begin to know God, we discover that, that it is sweet does not mean it is God. To some extent, is that in the pamper? He loves you. That, I think that song is trying to talk about the love of God. But he's a, also a judge and a king. And as loving as he is, he won't force you to know him. When he says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Actually, God does not draw. He's unmovable. It is, 
as you go close to him, he looks closer. He's actually standing in one place. It is you that keeps drawing. And the more you draw close, he, he is closer. Are you still here? Yes, so it's a responsibility upon each Christian. And that's the reason the secret place is not a public place. It's a place for private affairs. Your father that is in the secret, that see yet in the secret, will reward you openly. You can't tell me you are growing spiritually and you, and you are not useful in the tent. You are not useful, useful in the things of God. If you are growing, we will see and we will be glad you are growing. We won't be threatened. You know that pastor that is afraid when people are around him are growing. You know that guy? He's afraid. When a young man is, is on fire, the guy is, is troubled. I used to pastor a place. That, uh, oh, that I, we, are, we are four guys. I happen to be the director of teaching ministry. And till I left, every month I would write a manual. Even before I resigned, I made the manual into a book. I wrote a book for the church. I said, take so you won't be stranded when I leave. So, Gio is not always around. He's, an intern. He's a business guy. So, he left the church for us. <laughs> so, there's, I was following a, a guy, actually. Whenever I, I step up, and I'm not doing this. In, I'm not saying this. I know. Whenever I step up, the guy will be so troubled. Troubled. So, when I, when I said, I want to resign, the joy, the first thing he said to me, he said, I know you will leave. Now, this is not he they said to me, I know you will leave. And don't be troubled when people are troubled about your growth. Just grow. A time will come, God will place you somewhere. Are you here? Are you here? So it's a responsibility upon each Christian. I wanted to talk about some things, but you see, subheading. Salvation activated certain things in the life of the believer. You can sub you can subwrite it. The things salvation activated via in God in your life. I mean, the things salvation activated in your life. There are certain things that salvation activated in your life. The day you became born again, certain things were activated because salvation actually was not the plan of God. You should have known this by now. That God's plan for man was not salvation. Salvation came into the picture because there was a default. It was, you know, there's what they call remedial English. It was a remedial enterprise. Salvation actually is a, is a recalibration technology. God's eternal purpose was his kingdom. Are you here? You must know this. That God had to save you to bring you back to the original plan. The original plan was not salvation. God saved man because man fell. He saved man because man has left his place. You know, the Bible says that, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory. In other words, the capacity of God, the dimension of God that man was supposed to flaunt, to display, that ability was destroyed by the fall. So God had to save man in order to bring man to that original plan. And that's the reason when Jesus came, the gospel Jesus preached was the gospel of the kingdom. Because that was God's plan. So he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. What does that mean? God wants to rule among you. He wants to showcase his beauty. He wants to showcase his glory. Therefore, change the way you think for the kingdom has come. So salvation was a, a, a recalibration technology to bring man back to that original plan. So the day you became born again, certain things were activated. Number one, the possibility to know God and to walk with him. Certain things were activated the day you became born again. And the first thing that was activated is the possibility to know God and to walk with him. Hi. Just put on the slide for me, First Peter 2, 2, and leave it there. I will visit it before we close. The possibility to know God and to walk with him. The possibility to know God and to walk with with him. So the guy that is born again has the possibility. It is possible to know God. And it is possible to work with him. Can you preach that to your neighbor? Say it is possible to know God. And it is possible to work with him. 
Hi, can you preach it again? Say, it is possible to know God. And it is possible to walk with him. Again, can you preach it? Say, it is possible to know God. And it is very possible to walk with him. I, I told you these are fundamental teachings. I'm just trying to refresh your memory. But I believe you are getting blessed. So salvation activated the possibility to know God. So every Christian has the possibility to know God. So that thing you always say, the God of is not actually accurate with New Testament theology. It is not bad to respect your fathers of faith, respect. But if your Christianity is limited, so that when you are in trouble, you say, the God of mine. That means you do not have a personal work with God. And whereas, when you became born again, the possibility to know God and to work with him was activated. Because what God really wants to act achieve in our lives is that he wants to he wants you to trap his reality in your space preserve that reality so that through you that reality will become inheritance to your generation that's what god wants to do with your life through you something about him is trapped through you that thing that is trapped is preserved and through you that thing becomes an inheritance and that's why in moses we knew him as yahweh in Abraham, we knew him as Jehovah Jireh. Each of these fathers, they were able to trap dimensions of God in their generation. And what they trapped became an inheritance. That's why the Bible said a good man liveth an inheritance. And that inheritance is beyond estate. Because we've seen rich people die, they left estate, and it became a problem to the family. And whereas we have some persons also, that they actually had an inheritance, but it's from darkness. Your great grandfather left an inheritance. An inheritance of darkness. So we see one family struggling with one thing. It's an inheritance. What will you leave? What will you leave? So the possibility to trap something is in you. You have the possibility. Just explore it. There's something in you. I never knew I can be a teacher even though the calling was there until I began a journey. Oh my God. I began to seek God. I began to pray. You know those days even up to now the only way to find that if I'm at home is that I'm praying. When somebody comes to the company he say, hey, is pastor at home? He said, he said, no, no, just go close to his window if they pray there's I can wake up in the middle of the night, pray, 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 sleep. Bef wake up in the morning, study the evening. I did that for years. And I still do that. If I'm at home. Oh, because God told me, ah, a full-time preacher is one that is fully with me. So if you're into full-time ministry, you're not making anything out of it. You are fooling yourself. Well, bah. Fully in yourself. Full time. Fully. So you have to do something with it. Make something out of it. So I started exploring. Exploring. And suddenly, mighty, we've gone to meetings and we see God. We see mighty things. I discovered that all of those things I was doing, I was generating capacity to minister to old people. So I've gone to old old communities in Asia land, village, big church, but old women and we're able to teach and miracles happened and discovered a guy everything I've been doing, I've been building capacity to minister to people in different congregations God was preparing me, but I had to respond you don't know how much you can do there is more to you than meets the eyes just try and explore if it is possible if it, is, if it is something you can get, go for it. I know many prophecies have gone ahead of you. Many things have been said concerning your destiny. But you see, you see, you must take advantage of the resources that is available in salvation and explore. Explore. Seek God. Seek God. Give yourself to meditations. Give yourself to the scriptures. Get books, read, give full time to your work with God, and very soon heaven will smile that you exist. Mommy, I finished preaching one day. We had a mighty meeting. Oh, and I was going home when I got home. I, you know, even while I was in a tricycle going home, I heard the Lord say, Well done. Ah, that thing. Ah, 
There are many times when I finish some meetings. I will, you know, when heaven is applauding you, I, I lie not. I will feel this thing that God is so happy with me. I, I, I think Maria there. I heard him say, well done. Whoosh. I said, okay, we'll do this again. We do this again. We keep making God happy. We keep making him happy. Bringing joy. Making Jesus proud. We know if there are five of us, I, Jesus will be glad. We will may not be many, but we will not be fake. We will not be fake. I vowed I won't be a fake preacher. If God's word is powerful, let's try it. If the Holy Ghost is real, let's try it. So salvation activated that possibility. Let me show you something. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. We'll come back to this one. Because this is my test actually. We'll come back here. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. The possibility to know God and to walk with him. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever. Now, what I want to get out of this place is simple. Now, the word seed, because we're talking about the possibility to know God and to work with him. The word seed is from the Greek word sperma. Let me hear you say sperma. And it's from this word that we have the English word for spermatozoa. And it means life. So the Bible said we were born of the life of God. And that life is the word of God, Jesus. So your salvation is a product of an organic reality. And that's why we, we, we have something called organic salvation. It is life. What you receive is life. It's the very life of God. And it is the ability to know God and to work with him. Can you give me C sharp? The ability to know God and to work with him. You, you have that thing in you. It is not impossible to know God. It is not impossible to hear the voice of God. It is most in, not impossible to understand the things of the spirit. The day you became born again, you received a whole package. That's why Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, he said, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let me hear you shout it. Shout all. Oh my God, can you shout all? Shout all. Let me hear you say everything. Blessed with all spiritual blessings. In heavenly places. In other words, all that it takes to know God, to walk in the realities of the spirit, is in your spirit. All that it takes. So if you are not growing in God, it is your fault. Hi, Takima. It is your fault. If you have not been able to step into any dimension in God, it is your fault. If the gifts of the Spirit are not finding expression in your life, it is your fault. Because you are born of God. Everything that you need. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. We have the same thing. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. This life that I have is the life of God in me. Paul, can you help me? This life that I have is the life. Can you say with me? Yeah. This life that I have is the life of is the life of Christ in me. Yeah. Second Peter one three. I'm sorry. Is the love of God? Is the love? Come and say this life. This life that I is the life. Is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the love. For the last time, this love, this life that I am, is the life of God. Life of God is this love, this life that I am, is the love. 
for the last time. This life that I am is the life of Christ. This life that I am is the life of Christ. Come on, shout so activated 
when he died the veil that separated the holy place from the holy place was torn from the top to the bottom what does that mean it means god is not open the possibility in Ephesians, Paul says we have access into the very presence of God. We have access to the very presence of God. And God is seated in the realm of the spirit. In that civilization called light. Oh, waiting for your visitation. And the day you decide to come near to that dimension that is full of light. He will reveal himself. Oh, your life is supposed to be a showroom that showcases God. Oh, God wants to be seen. He wants to be revealed. He desired, he long, his greatest desire is that you know him. And that was made possible when the veil was turned. If you don't know God, it is your fault. If you don't know God, it is your fault. Heaven, heaven is open. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. The veil was stunned. The veil was stunned. God can be known. God can be touched. Realities can be unraveled. Dimensions can be stepped into. Portals can be opened even in your room. Even in your room at all. Oh, so much has been activated. Adieke kumineke koma surupi tiri kumie suzu kuru hey hey. Let me just give you the remaining two. I want you to teach. I wanted to give you definition of spiritual growth. I will do that next time when God gives me privilege. I want you to define spiritual growth. Then you will discover that spiritual growth is tangible. You will discover that spiritual growth is evidence. You will discover that a growing man can be touched. So in those days, men wanted to be elected that we take responsibility for church. And you can see wisdom in a man. He said, select man among you that are full of faith and the Holy Ghost. How do you know that this man is full of faith? How do you know that this man is full of wisdom? Spiritual growth can be touched. It can be evident. When you are growing spiritually, those around you will know. It is not something that you try to. I went to preach somewhere at a quiet bomb state. And one young man was trying to prove to me that he can sing. I said, bro, bro. You don't need to try to show it. If you have something, we will fit you out. When you are still struggling to be known, struggling to be relevant, you are still a babe. I mean, I, right from time, I don't fight for platform. I, I don't do that thing. Try to recommend yourself. Try to tell people how good you are. We, we don't do those things. Paul said, I know whom I believe. And I am convinced that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him. Number two. Oh yeah. Salvation activated the possibility of manifesting the gifts of the spirit. Salvation activated the possibility of manifesting the gifts of the spirit. It is possible to manifest the gifts of the spirit. Salvation makes that possible. That's the reason Paul did a lecture on the gifts of the spirit. If it is not possible, Paul wouldn't have taught it. Let's look at that. that first Corinthians chapter 2. I'm sorry, I, I have to break. Let me just finish this one because the things I have this place are much. I need three hours. Oh, you should know these things. I need three hours to be able to bring you into some things. You should know by now. I mean, we need some time, but there's no time. First Corinthians chapter 12. Let's just check something out from verse, from verse 4. Mm. The possibility. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit diversity. Many gifts. Many gifts. Go to verse 9. Go to verse 9. Go to verse 9, sir. Verse 8. 
verse 6. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works. Okay, what I'm looking for is in verse 7. Mm, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each for the profit of all. You see, there is a possibility to manifest it and we will be glad you are in church. It's for the profit of all. I have the gift of teaching. Called into the apostolic to teach. And it's for your good. It's not to prove that I'm a big man. It's for the profit of all, actually. We rejoice that a man like Reverend Kessiana Esiri is in what is a gift. His existence is for our profits. The existence of men like Apostle Arume Osai is for our profits. The existence of men like Pastor W.F. Kumui Kumui. Oh my God. The existence of this man is for our profit. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Oh my. Oh my. So there is a possibility to actually manifest some things. Oh, for the profit of all. That's it. Let me just try and, and go deeper. Let me just try. Oh, yes, oh, That's it. That's it. Media, can you help, Pastor? For the one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. One has it. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. The ability to know and give direction by the Spirit. Now, this place is trying to tell you there is a difference between the gift of the word of knowledge. The gift of the word of wisdom and the gift of the prophetic. Th that you can do word of wisdom and word of knowledge does not mean you are a prophet. It just means that you have the ability to decode spiritual matters and gives appropriate interpretation and, and direction. That's what, because the gift of the spirit and the gift, the gift of the word of wisdom and the gift of the word of knowledge, they are twin brothers. They work together. So there is a possibility to know things super, supernaturally, to interpret things supernaturally. Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. So, when you know something spiritually, you have the wisdom by the same spirit to apply them to your daily situation. You have the wisdom to give counsels. Those called into the ministry of a counselor, you need the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of the word of wisdom, to be able to decode things and give accurate direction. And it is possible. And this is what salvation made possible. So possible for you to know things. Go to verse 9. To another faith, the ability to believe beyond doubt is a special gift to believe. This was what we go sword hard. It's faith, the gift of faith. This faith does not come by hearing, it comes by activation. <laughs> by activation. That's when the scripture will be fulfilled that nothing is impossible to the man that believes. This thing does not come, it comes by activation. And that activation comes by fervent seeking. Of the face of God. This is what Babalola had. It's, it's a faith that can change things. He was praying. I actually saw the place. He was praying and a python climbed his body and dried off. I, he knew that something was climbing, but he knew that it is possible for that thing to dry. He was conscious of it. It is a gift of faith by the same spirit. To another, the gift of healings by the same spirit. Now, this is not the class, a class on the gift of the spirit. I would have taken time to explain each and every one of them. And I'm trying to tell you that these are the things that salvation has made possible. I, 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 I know you know this. I'm trying to remind you. That salvation makes these things possible for you. Let's stay. There are nine actually. To another the workings of miracles. Miracles. Something that, yeah, an event that is beyond philosophy. That's miracle. Something that you cannot articulate, you cannot explain. Because if it can be explained, it is not God. So, the ability to work miracles, and this is not for the evangelist only, it is for the usher, the gift of the working of miracles. To another prophecy, you see now, prophecy, the ability to speak by divine inspiration. To another discerning of spirit, in my own opinion, every Christian has this gift, but not all are using it. Because the Bible said we should test all spirit, and it takes this gift to test spirit. So, all of us have the gift of the discernment of spirit. I'm fast because this is not my emphasis today. So, maybe next time we'll do that. Another different kind of tongues we have. It. Another the interpretation of tongues, verse 11. But one and the same spirit 
works all this, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So, according to the will of God, something has been activated. And your manifestation of this gift is possible by salvation. Now, what is the key to spiritual growth? The major key. I wanted to define it, but I can't define spiritual growth. The major key to spiritual growth. Even there are ways to grow spiritually. The major key is zeal. Passion for God. Hey, if you have passion for God, you will be a student of the Bible. You will be a man of prayer. And that passion will cause you to grow dramatically in the spirit. First Corinthians, Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Then we will close. We will read it from three translations. That's the major key to spiritual growth. Show me a man that loves God. Show me a man that is passionate for the things of the spirit. Then I will show you a man that is growing constantly. Not lacking in diligence. Fervent. That's what I'm looking for. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Do you have the Amplified translation? Hello, Salbaro. Do you have the Amplified? Give me the Amplified. And this will form the basis for our prayer. Never lag in zeal. I went for a meeting on Friday night and I saw a young girl so zealous and I told her, I said, I love your zeal. And that's the reason the first thing you received when you received salvation was zeal. Any man that is newly born again, you see that, that thing, that thing, if that guy stay under a teacher and stay in an accurate church, that guy will grow fast. Many churches have killed the zeal of many people. The reason God gives that early zeal is so God can have a platform to, to manifest himself in the life of the believer. And that's the reason you see that those earlier days of your work with God, you had many encounters. It is that zeal, that first zeal. And that was what God was after. The first love, that first zeal. Never lag in zeal and in endless endeavor. Be a glow. Oh. Be a glow and burning with the spirits. Saving the Lord. That thing, if you have that thing called zeal, your growth will be amazing. That thing called zeal. Never lag. Don't lag this thing called zeal. That endless endeavor. That thing that propels you to be awake. When you sleep, if sleep overpower you in the middle of the night, your zeal has something is wrong with your zeal. That thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night. Not, not wala for us, friend. Not materialistic. There is a longing in your spirit. It is called zeal. See, guide your zeal. If there is anything you must guide in your work with God is your zeal. And as you increase in knowledge, there is a great need to guide your zeal. Because begin to cry, you think that you are now Baba. Me, I still have that zeal and I will keep having it. Regardless of the things I know, Regardless of my realm and no, those things, that zeal, that tears, that passion, that thing, if you have it, guide it. Never lag in zeal and in endless and but be aglow. That be aglow, burning with the spirit, serving the Lord. That's how you serve God. That is how you grow. It is zeal, enthusiasm, passion. That thing keeps you going. It keeps you in the place of prayer. Before you study Bible for four hours, you don't know. You check your time is after four. And you started studying by twelve. You say, Kai, what did it happen? What kept you there actually was your zeal for God. And it was said of Jesus, mommy. He said, the gift of the zeal for thy house has eaten me up. That's how a man grows in the kingdom. That is how a man becomes useful in the hand of God. That is how a man touches things in the spirit. That zeal, that push, that propelling force, that thing on the inside. Your prayer tonight is simple. Increase my zeal. That's your prayer. Increase my zeal. We'll pray that prayer for five minutes. I will lay hands on a few. Then I will leave your way. Increase my zeal. Increase my passion. Only fire born upon my altar again. That's zeal to know God. Sit down for one minute. Then you pray. But if you are left to stand, you can stand. Stand up now, pray instead of sitting. Can you ask the Lord increase my zeal? Can you pray like a baby? Increase my zeal. Can press at the caparando, patasi capatelamanda. I don't want to see anybody closing his mouth. 
I don't want to see anybody not praying. Increase my passion. Increase my zeal. Increase my zeal. Increase my zeal. Increase my zeal. I know my place. Can you pray? Pray. I know the place that I belong. <laughs> my place is up on the altar. Because that's where sacrifices belong. Pray. 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 I know my place. Yes. I know the place where I belong. My place is up on the altar. Because that's where sacrifices belong. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? I have become the king smith. I have become only fire's food. My place is up on the altar. Because that's where sacrifices belong. Can you pray? My place is up on the altar. Pray, 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 pray. Because that's where sacrifices belong. I came in with nothing. But all you have given me. Jesus, bring you wine out of me. Can you pray? 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 I came in with nothing. <laughs> But all you have given me, God. just pray, pray, pray. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. I came in with nothing. Pray loud in tongues, loud in tongues, loud in tongues. Hey, I take it. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring you one out of me. I suffer for you. Just pray, pray, pray. Where are you? Follow me closely. Because he got over. Fikira, guano. Oh, que parate, ayaka pasha, eke pepe pe. Can we pray? Let's pray. Acha ke 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 pa, eko pa pa pa. Ira, aso fa funyo. Wayo si wu. Shaya, because si gero. Fikire kwano. I am gonna get that shapa because she got over. Fikire kwano we. I am a mawer yofu. I am me kwano we gaga. Mawer yofu do me a shapa raba. Rewo yonu me. And me, me, my cabo, 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 roshaba. And me, me, my cabo, eshaba. Eta kebede. Two minutes more, two minutes more. Bo. And me, me, my.
God has gone down, you can hardly pray. That zeal, that passion has gone off. I want to lay my hands on you. Can you find your way to the altar? Find your way to the altar and kneel before Jesus. Find your way to the altar. Oh God. Many, many. Find your way. This is a night of salvation. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of revival. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Can you ask for restoration? Those of you in the congregation, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rabboni, take your place in my secret place.
congregation, raise, raise up your tones. I'm going to count from one to seven. I'm going to count from one to seven. There are many of you here that need to touch my right hand. I, I, I see an inheritance in my right hand that needs to drop on someone in the congregation. Raise up your twins. Are you done? Raise up your twins. Those of you here, you can go back so that they can have a way. Those they've touched, if they've touched you, you can go. Raise up your twins if you're in the congregation. I'm going to count from one to seven. So much will be activated. There are some of you, my teaching anointing, we jump. We just come upon you. My teaching anointing, we just, oh my God. Raise up your doors, close your eyes. At the count of one to seven. At the count of one to seven. The power of God. The power of God. From my right hand side. To my left hand side. To the middle row. Jesus. Jesus. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Holy Ghost, over this place, over this place, there is power, 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 Jesus, Jesus, there is power, there is power, ushers go around, there is power, Jesus, all the strong, all the strong, there is power, there is power. There is power. Jesus. 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 Somebody step behind her. Jesus. 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 Fire. Fresh fire. Whoosh. 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 What a song. She's an age woman, God is strong. There's power. There's power. Whoosh. There's power. There's something. There's something. There's something. In this place, there is fire. 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 Whoosh. Whoosh. There's fire. There's someone in this place. They need to touch my right hand. There's someone in this place. If it is you, I, if it is you, touch my right hand. There is power. There is power. There is power. Hold it strong. Hold it strong. There is power. There is power. There is power. There is power. It's strong. It's strong. It's strong. There's power. Whoosh. There's power. Whoosh. There's power. Hold it strong. There's power. Oh my God. Oh my God. You will never remain the same again. You will never remain the same again. You will never remain the same again. There are about four of you here. There's something like lights shining, shining before your eyes. Something like lights. Something that's light, like light. So much is in this place, Jesus. Jesus. What? Hold us strong. Hold us strong. Hold us strong. Yes. Hold us strong. 
so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, whoosh, 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 so much, 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 so much. Aya, aya, aya. I want to touch this one. There's so much. Hold that song, hold that song, hold that song, hold that song, hold that song. I have received something from God. I have received something from God. You will not remain the same again. My life has changed. 